Hey, hey! Bit early today. Still trying to figure out how long it takes to get onto a stream. But yes, it's me. I'm back Sunday, 4 o'clock. Um, hopefully I'm in Implement Club and on the HomeBiz Startup TV page on Facebook and on YouTube. Fingers crossed! And hopefully it says the irresistible offer um, from HomeBiz Startup TV. I'm broadcasting this um, to as a to also broadcast um, on TV, HomeBizStartup.tv later. So multi-purposing. So today on Implement Club. Uh, we're going to be talking about the irresistible offer. Uh, last week, we talked about getting started and the questions you need when you're starting a business. I still haven't figured out a title for this show. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we're going to go with how to start run and grow a home business. But I believe we started with the five steps to a uh, home business system. And then we looked at um, getting started, and today we're going to look at irresistible offer. Because unless you have something that's irresistible that you're offering, uh, don't get started with a business. Because you won't be able to sell anything, get any income and revenue, and uh, yeah. So here we go. <laughs> we're going to talk about the irresistible offer. The irresistible offer. Marlon Brando said it best in The Godfather Part 1. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. You need to make sure yours is one of the irresistible offers that they are looking for and that they find. An offer so great that they have to act upon your call to action that you will be giving them and buy your product. You will have done your research and will know how to position this irresistible product within the mind of your customer's current state of thinking. Your product will be screaming differentiation, i.e. it's different from everybody else's offer. So when your prospect reads your offer, it should appear to him or her so incredibly appealing and compelling that you are being so utterly generous with them that they feel like they're being totally ripping you off and getting away with it. You need to figure out <clears throat> how you will be able to pump up the offer and ma make it an absolute no-brainer that your prospects will kick themselves if they miss out on it. <clears throat> so how do you do that? Well, you go discover in your niche your target market Go find out their pains. Go find out what keeps them up at night. Go see the other solutions and what is missing in them. So I should have probably put my very small niche that I am passionate about in here with a picture of my Karen Terrier, but I didn't. So I have a Karen Terrier and we are passionate about Karen Terriers, those of us in that niche. It was something about seeing a Karen Terrier on the Wizard of Oz when we were in our, when we were little. It, it started there, really. Um, anyway, I had a Karen Terrier, about six of them in my lifetime, and I'm not sure if I'll pick another one. But uh, there's always pains with Karen Terriers, and um, we know what they are, and we could easily... Well, couldn't I couldn't find a solution because I haven't been able to figure out a solution for barking. <laughs> but um, there's certainly um, pains and, and troubles that keep us up at night about our, our dog. And, uh, of course, we're always looking for solutions to it. So check out what other people are buying now. Check out what gaps, holes, pains that need to be filled or solved. Create a solution to fill those holes, or create a solution to solve that pain. So, continuing on with my Karen Terrier. Um, he's a pretty good dog, actually, right now. Um, but uh, he does tend to bark at his water. I have no 
idea why he barks at his water <laughs> when I fill it up um, to overfilling, then he stops barking. So I need a therapist for my Karen Terrier, I think. Um, so yeah, yeah, there's all kinds of pains that you need to fill or get solved. And so you need to think if you can find the solution that is unique and it will solve their problem. Well, how can you create the solution? Well, you could use software, you could do a course, you could do a webinar, you could partner with somebody else's product and solve the problem. Um, you're going to have to research and ask yourself, what are they doing? Check other people's pa sales pages. Check out emails selling in your inbox. Check out other people's webinars. And which brings me to another subject. Um, right now, there's a very hot topic. It is chat GBT. And no, I am not a artificial intelligence. I'm a real person talking to you. And, and right now, um, everybody's talking about chat GBT, about artificial intelligence and content and copyright and whether or not it should be used and all that kind of thing. So right now, um, artificial intelligence is very hot. And if you can find the solution, um, make it easy for others to um, get over their anxiety about artificial intelligence and how they're going to use it, there's a lot of people with solutions. And in some ways, um, as a marketer, you have to go and ferry through all those solutions to figure out which ones are just repeating other people's solutions and and all that kind of thing. So right now it's very overwhelming when it comes to artificial intelligence because it's so brand new uh, that a lot of people are talking about it. But you have to ask yourself, are you going to, how are you going to be different from everybody else? Let's say you wanted to do something about this topic. Well, for example, I'm putting together some information about how you can use artificial intelligence but without worrying about copyright or copying other people's work and how you can use it in your business to do things quicker um, and not worry about it being an issue uh, in the future. So anyway, we all have solutions. <laughs> So let's go back to the presentation. So we can check out other people's webinars, see what they're talking about, see what uh, the current ideas are out there. Doesn't mean they're correct. So make sure you always have a grain of salt when you uh, listen to anybody's webinars and their results. You can ask yourself, does my product or service have relevance right now? Can the prospect see there is credibility to what the result is or solution that I am doing? Is there any true value, return of investment to the customer in order to um, create that product? Would they actually have a return that would be worth um, uh, participating and working with that and creating that solution? Um, does the customer see a risk to them to purchase it? Is there a sense of urgency? Do I have a target market? In, oh, sorry, target audience and the right audience. So let's talk going on further with that chat GPT thing. Uh, where am I here? The robots have got me. The um, right now, as I mentioned, chat GPT is very hot, and a lot of people are creating products um, for that. And you have to ask yourself, well. Okay, there is urgency. Um, people want to learn more about it, but how relevant is it to your target audience? And are they even going to be interested in it um, because of what they're doing? Well, for example, my Karen Terrier would not be interested in artificial intelligence or a solution using artificial intelligence. Unless I could get a robot dog that would scare him enough that he'd stop barking at his water. I don't think uh, there's any reason to have a chat TPT for my Karen Terrier. So, <laughs> um, 
can the prospect or customer visualize the benefits? Um, does my offer seem too good to be true? What do I offer that the co competitor doesn't? And what makes my service or product unique above my competitors? What is my unique selling proposition? Or what is my unique serving proposition? All these questions actually can help you when you're creating a sales page for your um, product or service or your offer. Um, if you answer these questions, you can fill that in on your sales page and your offer. And what's in it for the customer? So where are, where are they, when they're looking at your sales offer or your product offer, they are wanting to know how much risk is involved for them in laying out the money uh, for your solution. So they also want to know the benefits they will get from purchasing it. And what's the return on their investment? And is their return on their investment enough? If they're spending $300 on your service, would that actually have a double that return in terms of what they can get from it? Will it solve the problem they have with whatever they're doing? That's these kind of questions that the customer is thinking about. And on your sales page, on your sales offer page, you have to sort of answer these questions before they ask them. When they're looking at your sales offer, they're thinking there's no way they can lose by spending the money you're asking them to spend. They are seeing that the value that they're getting is greater than the value that they're spending. So for example, a $1 expending would give the $10 value. Would a $97 spend give them a, a 200 to 500 value? in terms of what the result is. So you have to think of that in terms of put yourself in your customer's brain and figure out the irresistible offer that will make it so that they are unable to stop themselves from purchasing. A customer buys one-time purchase of product or service and you want a client to buy from you again and again. So that's how I define the difference between a customer and client. A customer is someone who just buys one product from you, whereas a client has realized the value of what you offer and they will watch uh, what you're offering um, during the year and buy from you again and again because they understand that what you give them will give them a result. So what can I give them at a low price with value such that if I give it away to them, it's irresistible? It gives you credibility in their eyes as the expert in your niche and valued authentic self. So if you can find a bonus to add to your irresistible offer that you can give away that has a value uh, that they say, oh my, did she make a mistake giving this to us? What a, val what a valuable uh, product. It gives uh, you credibility in their eyes as the expert and you are valued. So when they're looking at your sales offer, they're looking at risk protection. They want you to remove all risk for them to invest. You need to remove all risk. You have to give them a guarantee that's almost irresistible and unbelievable. So for example, if within say 60 days, they're not happy with your product and they want to return it, you have to give it, you know, give it back to them satisfaction, not satisfied, then return of the money. Um, you have to look at urgency. Why should they buy it from you right now instead of waiting? It should be believable that they have to buy it now. Well, obviously prices can go up after a certain time period and they definitely have to. Otherwise they don't believe that there's an urgency. And course starts, for example, if a course is starting at a certain date and they need to buy it beforehand, there's another urgency. Or if the offer disappears for uh, software at a certain time period, that's also another way to add urgency. So you can't sell ice to the Inuit, but you can sell ice to a thirsty hot crowd. 
You need the right audience for the right offer. It has to be the solution for the problem that your audience is searching for. You don't want to be selling ice to the Inuit, so get your audience correct for your solution and your offer. Um, so you should be able to deliver on Christmas Day, family presents on time. That's obviously an irresistible promise. You give the prospect solution benefit that makes it easy for them to decide your offer is better than the competition. Amazon Prime, for example, promises delivery time on Christmas that the post office can't as they don't work on Christmas Day where I am. So you have to ask yourself what kind of promises you can make that are realistic, but always so very uh, tempting. Make sure every claim about your offer is believable by providing specifics about the offer, using testimonials if you can, allow a trial use if you can, do demos of the uh, product or service on webinars, do trainings for free on webinars and then give them the offer. They can see by the training on the webinar who you are and whether they like what you do whether they trust you, and they will make it easier for them to consider buying from you. So don't stop at one product or service. Think long term and next product or service. Keep to the customer buying from you again and again much easier than getting two new customers. And also, customers become clients, remember? They are if they're buying from you again and again because they believe in you. Be generous for your first purchase and make less profit to attain a customer or client. Over deliver to your customer or clients. These are some of the things to consider when you're doing an irresistible offer. And you can be creative with your offer. What creativity can you do to increase the value or spin on your solution? Can you be creative in your payment terms? Can you add a bonus to the product or service that gets them to solution faster? Can you give them a 30-day trial? Can you cover shipping costs? Can you be creative with your guarantee? Make it risk-free, lifetime, or return no questions asked if they don't need it. How much can you show the visitor to your sales page that you really believe in what you're offering? And also, how much can you do to make it a creative and irresistible offer? Bonuses. Bonuses can be given, but they must be relevant to the primary offer to your solution. Most help visitor to see that with the added bonus, they can solve the problem either quicker, greater results or actionable solution. The more relevant to what someone is purchasing, the better. So next time we're going to look at product creation ideas in your business. Um, I do have an opt-in and product offers brainstorming worksheet. It's available at http colon backslash backslash jgtips dot com backslash sales. And believe it or not, I do. <laughs> I've had it for a while. Um, so yeah, that's my only offer for today is a free um, worksheet on, on working with um, product offers and brainstorming some of the uh, ideas on what to do with it. And of course, you can get it at where I mentioned, jgtips.com backslash sales. Uh, so yeah, so we were, this is gonna be the, this is basically the start a business uh, show. And I don't have an offer for you today other than my, my, my opt-in and product offers worksheet. Uh, so, as you know, I'm also doing Build Your Business in 52 Weeks on Saturdays at 8 a.m. Uh, Pacific Standard Time. So that's what the other process is. So let's just uh, hope that you learn something from this and you can um, use it. And um, I'll see you next time. And maybe I'll have my irresistible offer next time. I'm going to have to think about that now. There's a lot of things to consider. Creativity, your bonuses, your um, 
what you can add as a testimonials, um, the, what's the return of an investment, all that kind of stuff. So go back and have a look through that again and, and get the uh, worksheet. And maybe I'll work through the worksheet and find my irresistible offer for you next week. This is Jane Garland.